So I'll try to some make some provocative statements so that it triggers some discussion afterwards. So I hope it works. Uh, before I start uh, my talk, I want to um, to dedicate a big thank you to the Klaus Gira Stiftung Foundation and the Heidelberg Institute of Theoretical Studies because they are the big important um, contributors to this building which you see here, which is the ESO Supernova. Um, it's, a founda it's, it's given by uh, the G Klaus Gira Foundation. Um, sadly enough, Klaus Gira itself could not celebrate the operation of the data. He, um, he passed away in 2015. Um, but he would have certainly have appreciated this tremendously nice building which contains on this area a planetarium and on the whole area an exhibition which with the help of HITS um, um, we have um, equipped with an, a marvelous exhibition and we have an, a, a, like, uh, and again a, a marvelous uh, a planetarium in this building. So if you, if you happen to visit ESO, don't miss this opportunity. So thanks again. Um, about science, data, and software, we have heard a number of talks, many talks about software methodologies. Um, this is about, like it's been explained just a minute ago, this is about culture. Um, so I talk about a bit of a science, a bit about data, but mostly about software. And um, there is a problem in the software in the sense that um, uh, software is critical for science, but it's not always acknowledged in the right way, and certainly not always cited in the right way. So, um, so in this ca talk, I will try, at least for the younger generation, to have some educational value and raise some awareness of what the problem is. Um, the problem is the acknowledgement and citation of software explained, so I'll explain somewhere what the problem is. I, I hope to... Um, to uh, convince you that we have some policies and principles in place which can, uh, can help us in relieving or at least resolving partially the problem and uh, explain what ASCL is, which is the Astrophysics Source Code Library, which is an, um, a project which is already something like 10 years going on, actually more, almost 20 years going on, with in which you can cite and, and register your software. So what's the problem? The problem is following. It's well accepted that in the scientific community, if you write a paper and you use data or um, science from other people, your reference is correctly. So if you use data, science, you write in the references, your table of references, what, where the data coming from and where the science comes from. This is all accepted. There are actually a number of people in Germany actually ministers were fired not doing for not doing this because they wrote a PhD thesis and did not reference or index or made a references to previously science uh, results actually claimed it was their own. That's not a bad thing. That's not a good thing to do. So, um, so that's mostly properly correctly done. In, in terms of data and computing data, observational data, the situation is a bit of worse. Um, in some cases, even it's sometimes hard to understand where the data is coming from. It's sometimes hard to understand what the nature of the data is. It's sometimes hard to, um, to understand what the instrument, in terms of obs observational, obser observational astronomy, what the instrument was doing, what the be behavior of the instrument, the characteristic of the instrument was in terms of data acquisition. So sometimes, it's very often actually, it's hard to understand where the data is and what the nature of the data is. And sometimes you have to go really deep in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the paper, in the science paper, to understand what's, what's going on, what the data is all about. In terms of software, in particular in the older days, it's getting better and better, but it's still, it's still not there. Software was even worse. Software was not even referenced. Software was even not, not nowhere correct, uh, correctly cited. Software was almost an unavoidable, nece an unavoidable necessity. The times when I wrote my PhD, and that's some years ago, the soft I wrote loads of software for my PhD, but it was nowhere in the science papers which I wrote afterwards. Bad. It's actually, it was always not considered to be part of the scientific process. It was just an add-on product, but it was not real science. Um, if it was mentioned, it was mostly mentioned in sometimes data reduction section. Um, 
it was, like I said before, it was hardly recognized. It was nowhere uh, somewhere acknowledged and nowhere is correctly cited. Hard to find, hard to understand what the software does, let alone the fact that the software, of course, was not even available on the web. And actually, in that times, and it's getting, uh, like I said before, it's getting better and better, some journals actually discourage software publications or referencing. That situation improved substantially when particular optical observatories, like the VLT and other ones as well, um, took uh, basically the same attitude as radio observatories and space observatories operated. This is the VLT data flow system. And you see different components. You see the program handling, proposal submission. You see observation handling, the phase two, propo phase two, phase, uh, phase two uh, box where the observations were scheduled. This actually is the obser observation and data acquisition box. This is a science archive, pipeline, quality control. And all these boxes basically are attached to each other by software all science software. And of course, there's cross, there's cross relations, etc., etc. Basically, the system is machine driven. There's hardly any, any person here involved, actively involved in, in steering this thing. That's at least al almost the case, not always the case, of course. At the end, actually here, and you see the next picture, which basically is the same data system for ALMA. Again, phase one, phase two is scheduling control, telescope calibration, quick look, calibration, uh, correlation, quality control, and pipeline. There is here the poor PI, which at some point has to hand in these proposals. And at the end of the, this whole data flow system gets, if he's lucky, the images and spectra. And then the ball game starts because he has to have certain data analysis software. And if, in the case of ALMA, it's mostly CASA, but of course there's AstroPi and other facilities and other software tools he can use to produce eventually the science. Now, here it's clear, software is important. Software is a major, major part of your science project and your science process. So, what makes it important, software? Well, first of all, it has a method, as we all know, it, uh, and it has, uh, it has a purpose and a method. So, it's, it generates science results, which can be anything. It can be calibration, it can be storage in an archive, it can be a quick look, and eventually to some science coming out, and if you're lucky, you have some good scientific discoveries. And of course, science and their software is, and that's an important issue, is reusable. If you're sitting on your chair, you're making your software for your own, it's good for your own, but it's not good for the world. So if there's a possibility to reuse software, do it. Of course, there are loads of software which is reusable. CASA, again, is a good example. AstroPi, there are loads of stuff on the web which you, uh, in, this, in this world which is intended to be reused by other people. But there is more to that. It's software is fun. It at least can be fun. Not always. It can be fun. Uh, it's a creative process. And it, it, it's, it's a way of adding a common or an uncommon way to resolve issues which you have, scientific issues which you have. So that's, that's fun, like I said, and it's creative. And it, of course, has an educational value. Educational value is you can teach students how to write or not to write code. Mostly not to write code, because most of the examples you see is bad. Um, so it's actually, there are probably many people in this audience who write software by grabbing other software, getting the idea, or getting the, 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 at least the, the, the template, and starting to write their code using that example. So it has certainly an educational value. So software is an important part of a research process, and it's much like an extension to the instrument. I'm an observer, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm talking uh, from the perspective of an observer. Okay. So what's important here is that the integrity, sorry, that the integrity of the research and scientific results clearly depend on the transparency of the code which is, is being used. And as we all know, science must be reproducible, otherwise it's pretty useless. So if you have code and it produces something and you refer to that something science result in your paper, it's good, but it's only used 
if it's only useful if that code is available to reproduce that science result. So anything less than releasing the actual source code, that's what I'm reading here, is an indefensible approach of any scientific result that depends on computation. So if you have code, you shouldn't just sit on it, you should make it public and should make it available to the community to check that you have done solid, good science. Okay, there's, um, there's ample opportunities to do that. For example, there's Bitbucket, there's GitHub, there's Fixair, there's Sudano, there's probably more available. I'm not the expert. Actually, this talk should be given by Alice Allen, who is not here. Well, she was in Vienna, was not able to come here. She's certainly the expert in, the, in this thing. So if you have detailed questions, you should address this to her. Maybe she actually is listening. I don't know. Yes. Okay. And of course, in addition, in addition to that, in addition to these things where you can upload, upload your source code, there's also indexers and software citation uh, uh, tools. So ACL, I will come back to in a minute. There's ADS. There's Google Scholar. There's Web, uh, Web of Science. It's actually a commercial. And there is a, an, 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 another product here, which is a collaboration between ADS, AAS, AAS and Zenodo. So there's ample opportunities to do, a, to do a good job here. Actually, there are a number of groups who are actually busy, busy with this, partly ad, uh, dedicated to data, but also to software. I listed them here. I will not go into the details. Um, some of them are big. Some of them are smaller groups. Some are, like I said, are, are geared to a data. Some of them are interested more in software, policies, uh, and, and citation. Um, the first one, for example, is also interested in, in career promotion for people coding. Um, I, will, I will, without going through the, the first three, I will concentrate a bit on Force 11, which, is an, which was initiated by the Dachstuhl um, here in Germany Congress in 2011, who has, has, written, has written down a number of citation principles. I will show that in a minute. And there is also a Dachstuhl uh, publication on the manifesto, How to Behave, that was published in 2016. So here is the citation principle of Force 11. And if you'll read, I will not read through it completely through this. Hang on, let's shift it a bit. But um, <laughs> there are a few which are, um, I, will, I will allude here. There's an importance principle, software, data, is as important as the final scientific project, uh, product, uh, credit and attribution to all contributors, so you, you make sure that all the contributors to the, to the science are well, are well um, uh, acknowledged. Um, evidence, these are the buzzwords. Evidence, data should be cited. Well, you can go through this, um, and, and you see this is almost obvious. Um, the Dachstuhl Manifesto, uh, it lists three basic principles. First. It tells you that if I do something, I will make explicit, I will write something, I will explicit um, uh, uh, make sure that, uh, that, the site that, that people how, how know how to cite my software. So I make it clear that so I want, I write software and I want this software to be cited in that particular way. So it, it's clear instructions to the authors. The other way around, if I use, um, if I use software from others, I will cite correctly. And this is for this is for the um, and so the last one is basically for the reviewers and for the publishers. So if you look through a software for a uh, science uh, paper and you see that software is there, you should actually insist that the software is correctly referenced. Um, so you have to encourage people doing this. So, um, so if citations are important to you. I think it should, then there are a couple of things you should do. First, license your code. Second, make your software available and discoverable. There's no point in licensing your code and make it uncoverable. Make it not to be found by other people. Don't hide it. And if you're, if you're a wise person, you put it in different places. Very well. Second, the third one is register and, ar sorry, register and archive your code. And you can do this with ACL. I'll send this in a minute. And as has been um, uh, written before, choose a trackable citation method. Make sure that you have a unique, clear instruction how to cite your code. 
specify how you want your code beside it. And finally, publish information about your software. You can, of course, upload your software, you can license your software, but a good description of your software is very valuable for people who write, who write science, science um, uh, documents, science papers afterwards when using your software. So why should you do this? Why should you um, do all this work, extra work? Um, there are a number of things you can, you can, of course, think of. Of course, you can have tracking software so you can see who's using your code and how, how often it's code, how often it's being used. Of course, you can gain recognition. If you write good code, you publish this and it's been referenced several times. You, uh, you, uh, recognition is, in, is increased and in being a good software contributor to, to, the, to the society, to the community. Um, you can comply with funding requirements. Um, if a substantial amount of your time doing science is indeed writing code, you may have a funding problem. So if you can justify that you have additional need, additional manpower for writing code for your project, then you may put us in your funding re funding uh, a pro a funding uh, proposal and get this 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 uh, this approved. Of course, it also helps in appro getting approval for further funding and for peer reviews. And further, of course, if you publish code and the code is well available, then you can start collaboration, improving the science and improving the software. Of course, there are a number of people who think, well, it's all too much work, and you ho you hear. Um, many times kind of excuses why not to do this thing. Um, I just listen a few, five, there'll certainly be more. <coughs> um, people see no, no feedback, no, no back pay benefit to sharing software. Well, my, my counter argument, you can only know this when you're doing it. So, um, um, People say I'm not required to do so, so I'm too busy with other stuff, so uh, I leave it. If you don't do that, if you, if you do that, if you behave that way, you actually deteriorate in the science you produce. Um, there's people who said, well, the code is not available uh, because it's messy. A bad example. Um, I hear just, Ellen, I may have seen that email from, Ellen, from uh, Alice about, uh, there was, a, there was a, a, a big dispute about phase transitions in, 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 in uh, and water, and eventually it turned out that this this whole thing was because some code was not made available, and the code was tricky and buggy. So um, there's fears of losing competition if your code is in competition with other code. Mm. Well, we like competition in science, so you better you publish these things. I think you should not be afraid of. Um, and of course, there's sometimes university policies. If you need to citate cite uh, software, and I think you should. Make sure you do it in the correct way. Make sure that uh, you do it in a way the author, author would like to have it. If you want to know that, there's probably a README file somewhere, there's a citation file, there's ACL, um, or if you, if you don't know, just ask the author. You can also go to ADS, because much of the code is cited in ADS, and you, goes, you can go there and see how the code is pro can be properly cited. If, you're not, if you don't see that, of course, you're free to make an entry yourself. It would be useful to, to, uh, to talk to the author of the code, but you can do this. And if, you, if you're if really good, you add also a, a software section in your paper about the code you're using, and if it's somebody else's code, you probably, again, probably ref properly reference this thing. So there are some improvements in, in the journals. If you look at journals, like I said it before, in the old days, it was hard to get software published. Nowadays it's getting better, although we're not there yet. Um, so there is, there is journals who have changed the policies and thanks to pressure for individual people, from communities, and also for, uh, actually, also for funding agencies. In astronomy, most of the journals do allow citation, monthly notices, science. Actually, a number of journals of nature actually insist that not only citing but also the, uh, is, is important, but also the software should be available so you can reproduce the science result. Many other journals also allow science uh, software across discipline. But there's no standard for software citation yet, so that can be improved, and it's certainly not a requirement, like I said before, there's no requirement yet that software must be available and downloadable. 
So there are a number of journals. I list them here. Maybe you're so familiar with few. They're non-astro-specific, and there is astro-specific. Um, so there's possibly, like I said before, there's there's probably more. I'm going to ACL, which is, in, uh, as I said before, um, started in 1999, as far as I know, and it's 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 in it it has been started to to make the science and the software and science more transparent. So people do it, I know, understand what's, what's, what the software is doing to your science. It's a registry for science software in astronomy. So you can go there, you can register your software, you can actually document your software, and you can produce, uh, pro uh, provide descriptions of the source code. It's not a site where you can upload. That's the other ones, which is showed in a few graphs before but it can help you in, 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 uh, in, in service in, in providing a repository. Actually, ASCL is indexed by ADS, Web of Science, and others. So it gives you, it gives you ample opportunity to make your code available and make your code aware by others. So what do we register? What does ASCL register? It's all reference, refereed papers, or papers which are submitted to referees. In addition, we all, ASCL also accept PhD thesis. However, and here we go, the code must be available and downloadable without barriers. So, proper documentation, downloadable, and a license and a registration. So, the benefits of ASCL is the following. It's improved transparency in science results. Transparency in the source code, and therefore also transparency in the science results the code produces. Is of course increases the reliability of the data and the software and the science. It provides, my God, it provides a way to cite software separately from papers. It's not only a citation from the paper where the software appears, but also it's a citation of the software description itself. It helps you also in designing DOE, DOI for codes host and host in the DOEN in ACL, and it adds. It aid made eight software discoverable. So it helps you in making the software not only available, but also easy to find by other people. So if you need a piece of code, you can go to ACL, you can find where the, what the code does, and you can also find where it is. Actually, ADS shows now that 58 journals has been indexed, have citations in ACL. So ADS does a good job, and um, it makes things very easy to find. In addition, the Web of Science also indexed the resources where the code actually lies. Currently we have between 10, 10, 2010 and 2018, you see here an overview of which, which code has been added and as a registry. So it's almost around 200 per year. So we, code, we currently at something like 1500. Um, so it's still, still going strong and still yearly, I've, I believe, very successful. This is the way the ACL shows what code is available on the market, on the web, uh, or downloadable. Like I said, ACL only registered code which is downloadable. So here's, a, here's an AHD, a, uh, ACL index. Here's the code name or the description. Here's where the, you, can down, you can upload the code. Here's a reference which basically uh, um, papers are refer referring to this code. There's actually also a BIP code. And here is what the authors wrote, would like to have in the paper if the code is being used as a, as a citation. This code is made blah, 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 blah. Okay. The number of citations per year from A what's code which has been registered in, AS in ASCL and indexed by ADS. We are currently at, for 2015, 2018 were about 800, and you see we have a, a very nice, steeply rise. We're still going strong. So apparently, it is a successful way of registering code and making code available to the community and improving science. So, the last, oh, not bad. <laughs> and the last slide is is the mission to you, in particular the younger generation. I'm not quite sure if it can reach the older generation, but I hope to reach the younger generations here that if you have code available and you want to make it available, and I think you should be able to make it available, 
if it if you want to have it if you want to make a contribution to science that is register your code and release it archive your code somewhere well that's all I mean you can read for yourself of course license your code specify how you want the code to be cited and an example has been given just a minute ago in the ACL page and cite other people's code well do other people a good favor if people have made effort to produce good code, I think they deserve a well a good citation. I hope I fulfilled my mission here. Thank you. <laughs>